Now, Nintendo have promised us unrivaled graphics, latest technology in both computer modeling and rendering. They've also mentioned it's a 32 meg cart. Now, both these points are very huge promises for any company to make. Now, after a year and a half in the making and the launch just around the bend, we've decided to get two totally different points of view. And by asking Amos to join me in finding out, did Nintendo deliver the goods? Well, the short answer, Liz, is yes. Nintendo have kept their promise. And for those of you who are dying to see Donkey Kong Country before anyone else, here's your chance. The sprites and backgrounds are excellent, with good gameplay to match. What you're seeing at the moment are computer-rendered and modelled graphics done by the company Silicon Graphics, who are responsible for the special effects for movies such as Jurassic Park, T2, True Lies, and are also working with Nintendo on their 64-bit machine. It's by using this technique that Nintendo have been able to give such brilliant 3D graphics and smooth animation. And when you look for detail in a game, the first thing you see are the main characters. And in Donkey Kong Country, there are three generations of Donkey Kongs. First, there's Donkey Kong himself. Then, for the first time on screen, there's Diddy Kong. These guys are the two you use to play the game. The third Donkey Kong is the granddad. He pops up now and then to give you hints. He is the original Donkey Kong. Now, the game gives you the option to pick which Kong you want to be. Now, why it does this, we're not quite sure, because as you can see, you play with both the Kongs for most of the game. The levels are challenging, with so many hidden secret rooms that you're never quite sure if you've found them all. Here's just one example that shows you that being adventurous can not only be quicker, but rewarding. The most amazing thing is that every level has these tricks, and with 100 levels and an extra 100 secret and hidden places to find, there's a lot of looking. Luckily, Donkey Kong Country has a save option, which means you don't have to play it for a month straight to complete it. And if you think that all the levels look the same, you couldn't be more wrong. Check this out. Now that's how you make a number one seller. It has everything that we, the game players, want in a hot title. It has the best graphics to date, a superior soundtrack and gameplay that is addicted to the very end. And to top it all off, Nintendo aren't asking $150 to $200 like most new releases. Donkey Kong Country will cost you less than $100. No joking. This is truly a case of where a company has put their mind, money and effort in all the right places and achieved exactly what they set out to do, create a number one game. 94. Nintendo's Vice President of Marketing in the USA said in his press release that Donkey Kong Country has true mega hit potential. All I can say is, you're not wrong. And after more than a decade since Donkey Kong's first hit in the arcades, he debuts on the SNES in the game of the decade, 96. 96? Well, that would have to be the biggest SNES game ever. One to definitely mark down for your Christmas stocking list, I think. Time now to find what's the buzz in the gaming world with Muttley. Oh, how you doing? I was just meditating. It's my meditating hat. It's pretty cool. I'm here to talk about Rex. Radical Rex. It's coming out on the SNES pretty soon. Brought to you by Activision. The Mega Drive version is coming out too, so don't worry if you've got a Mega Drive. Sony's bringing it out soon. But this is the Activision SNES version. Over the next few weeks, we will give you a chance to win. Well, actually, we'll give three people a chance to win a game and a skateboard. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a question this week. We'll give you a question next week. And after you hear the second question, you send in your entries, and in the third week, we'll draw our three winners. Now, the question for this week happens to be, what is Rex? He's some sort of dinosaur. He's a something Rex. You think about that while I take some fuzz. I was talking to my mates at ID Software and Sega Aussie Soft, and they sent me over six copies of the game Doom 2. Well, I'm going to keep one, but the other five we can give away. That's right, yep. All you have to do is answer true or false to this question. Is Doom 2 just a one-player game? Think about it and answer true or false right into the Doom and Gloom competition. PO Box 27, New South Wales, will be New South Wales 2068. See, I got it right. Pretty good. And um, next week, next week, we're going to draw five, five lucky winners. So you've got to be in it to win it, and you've got to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country, it's a huge game, eh? Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's so wicked. And you know, it got, it's going to get released in Australia two days before anywhere else in the world. Two days in Australia before it. That's a first. No one's ever done that. Nintendo come to the party. That's pretty cool, eh? Yeah, I'll call you back after I finish the buzz. What are you doing listening to me, phone call? If you've got a PC, you know what a hassle it is to configure your computer for different games. Every time you change a game, the memory setups and all that sort of stuff. Well, don't worry. The legends at IBM Software have created a running system called OS2 Warp. 
and it's just a running system for your computer, especially designed for games. You can play for, for up to six games at once on your screen. How exciting is that? Six games, six windows on your screen all at once. Not a problem. I mean, if you can play six games at once, I reckon that's a great idea. We've got Bev having a look at it, and hopefully coming up soon on the zone, we'll be able to have a look at it. A little bit I can't even speak English anymore, but that's how excited I am. Amazing. Anyway, back to the meditation, because I think I need it. Remember, I used to be monthly, but now I'm... I lose it. I lose it. I lose it. Oi. So, so, so. And he's going head to head with Sonic. Introducing the world's first backward compatible game, Sonic and Knuckles. Play through seven zones plus bonus stages against all new enemies. And it doesn't end there. Lock on your Sonic 2 or 3 cart and transport Knuckles to hidden levels in your old games. Sonic and Knuckles for your Sega Mega Drive. Printed at your video store now. Throw with. You are now at So, so, so. It's the Bepster, with some groovy grindage. In the game Jungle Book, it's no use running around willy-nilly, doing whatever you like in the game and buffing anybody that comes along. The key to solving the game is finding the compass. It shows you the location of the gems, and by following it, you can't really go wrong. Even if a gem is hidden, you should be able to find it by watching the compass needle and where it is pointing. And if you find the compass at the start of each level, there shouldn't be a problem in finishing the game. Spider-Man is a huge superhero. Unfortunately, though, his previous gaming experiences have been anything but legendary. This new game on the Mega Drive promises to be different though. Let's hope it is. It's called Maximum Carnage. Once again, Spider-Man is in a game, and this one is way cool. It's set in a real comic book atmosphere from the animated introduction to the graphic design and overall look of all the characters. The ever-happening Spider-Man is the main character with plenty of mean moves at his disposal, and dodgy boy Venom also tags along. The idea of this game is to superhero your way through endless numbers of street punks and bad guys until you finally get to take on the evil Maximum Carnage. It sounds like your average everyday beat-em-up, but it's much cooler than that. Now this is cool, not only because of the gameplay, but because the storyline actually unfolds in front of you as you play the game. Which means you don't have to watch ages and ages of footage and animation to find out what the whole thing is about. Maximum Carnage takes you through a new realm of comic book fantasies, through a good storyline and even better gameplay. 86. The sprites are large and well animated. The controls are exactly that, controls. And the levels are varied from testing your fighting skills to testing your agility skills. All round, it's a great game. 85. Keeping your dad happy gives you a better chance of getting exactly the games you want this Christmas. To help you do that, here's a list of games that mightn't be your faves, but will make dad a very happy game hit. What a good looking fellow. Now anyway, the purpose of this whole exercise is that you buy your dad some games, or even one game, and because of that, he plays that game, he enjoys it, he might buy you some. Now, dads will normally work in three groups. They like the sports games, the strategic games, and the role playing games. So I'm gonna give you a few games from each system for each of those groups. First up, sports, we have golf. All dads like golf, and with these games, some of them might even be good at it. On the PC, we're talking, we're talking games like PGA 486, or of course there's Lynx 386 and all those really cool games. On the Mega Drive, we've got stuff like all European Tour and, and those sort of games, they're all really cool. Or if you've got a SNES, Pebble Beach Golf, number one, they'll really love it. Or, again on the sports scene, with summer coming up, something like Alan, Alan Borders Cricket, Alan Borders Cricket, he'll love it. Now we know it's not the best game in the world, but then again, your dad's probably not the best gamer in the world. Next up, strategy. Now these games, let your dad be in charge even when your mum is around, he'll love these. They make him think. Games like Outpost on the PC, Settlers on the PC, SimCity 2000, or if you've got a Mega Drive, Dune or Dune 2, the Battle for Arrakis, they're always really cool. And Power Manga on the SNES, a good, good beefy power title. They'll always work a million. Last but not least, we've got role-playing games. I haven't got any with me at the moment. But games on the PC like Police Quest and all those Quest, King's Quest, all those Quest type games are always good and Leisure Suit Larry. If you're talking the Mega Drive, you're talking games like Landstalker and stuff like that. So just investigate the role playing game titles and get into it. 
And of course, one biggie if your dad's got a PC is Doom 2. Well, that about wraps it up. We'll be back in a couple weeks in case those games don't work to give you some more that you can bribe your dad with or even, 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 even some games for mum because we all know mums make all the decisions around the house. Anyway, that's all for this week. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Well, I'll probably see you real soon, but I mean, I'll see you in regards to these games in a couple of weeks. Sure, if you're not confused by that, I don't know who is. We'll keep you updated with the games that we reckon will suit your folks. But right now, here's one that's made for you. Bevan might previewed it last week. It's on the SNES, and its hero is the one and only His Royal Highness, Michael Air Jordan. Now, call me an idiot. You're an idiot! Watch it, mate. Anyway, as I was saying, I thought that Michael Jordan plays baseball now. But it seems he's got a basketball in his hand. But to make things more confusing, he's nowhere near a basketball court. However, there are heaps of hoops. Hey, Amos, help me out, man. Sure. MJ in the Windy City is a platformer, as you can see, where you must fight your way through huge spiders, small spiders, killer flying bats, and... These dudes that have got basketballs for heads, which they rip off and chuck at you, they're unreal. Settle down, mutt. <laughs> Sorry. This does remind me of Marco's magic football, but it plays even better. I wouldn't call it the most challenging platformer I've ever played, but it is one of the most addictive. If you get this one, you won't put it down. It scrolls well, the graphics are cool, and the gameplay speaks for itself. 88. Hey, this even smells good. 86. Bev's cool. Well, not really, but he's got great tips. I'm down here in the games room, that's the zone games room, and I've got a really cool cheat for it on Super Mario Kart on the SNES, so come on in, I'll show you how to do it. On the course select screen, go to the Mushroom Cup and press left, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, and the A button. And now you'll be able to play the special cup stages on the time trial. So, 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 so. On 60 Minutes. Describe. So, 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 so. We all like to think we're the best game players in the world. Am I right? But sometimes we have to lie. Getting to certain levels in certain worlds is not that easy. But we're going to change all that. At the controls, Mutt and Bev. I'm down here in the games room, and as Adam said, gaming isn't all that easy. But it's only not that easy if you don't have a game plan to stick to. If you rush in and you just do whatever you like in the game without thinking it through. Now, hopefully, Muttley and myself here will be able to show a few strategies that will get you through this game, Zombie Ate My Neighbours. Your survival in the game depends on two things, your life meter and the number of neighbours you save. The more you save, the more chances you have to go to the next level. This number on the right, underneath the radar, tells you how many neighbours are still on the level. Each time one is zombied or collected by you, the number decreases. The radar tells you where they are on the map, and they appear as little yellow dots. When collecting a neighbour, watch out for the zombies in front of you, as they copy your movements, and if you go for a neighbour, so will they. Keys are another important part of the game, and without them, you can't get into the buildings. Once you've collected all the neighbours and you're feeling a little lucky, search the area for all the bonus weapons, life, potions, and other extras that are floating around. Well, there you have it, a fairly easy strategy for Zombies Ate My Neighbours. Now, next week, we're going to bring you another one. But remember, when you're playing games, Stick to your game plan. That's the most important thing. And you should have no problems. The Zone Trivia Challenge has proved to be the longest running competition in the world. But we are coming to a conclusion, guys. Chill. Today, in fact, right now, our first contestant is in the studio and ready to be tortured. <laughs> the Zone Trivia Challenge. <laughs> Quick change! Adam had to get into his ladder for the torture. OK, let's go. Matt, We've got the, the first victim. His name is Darren Mifsud. And it doesn't look too smart to me, mate, I'm telling you. No. Anyway, all right, if you win, this is a grand final. If you win this over the next three weeks, we'll be, we'll be testing other people. If you win, you get a, a Mega Drive, a Mega CD, a SNES, a Game Boy, heaps of stuff from EA and Play Corp like software like you don't believe it. Huge amounts of but stuff. But don't get too cocky, mate. No, mate, because the way win. you do it is you've got 60 seconds and however many you get right, if it beats everybody else, then you get the gear, okay? If you don't, you're a loser. We kick you out, we belt you about a bit. Else. Anyway, let's go on with it. So let's 60 start, seconds. Start the stopwatch. So, Have you got a watch? Have you got a watch? watch. You got a watch. watch. Give, me Give me the watch. Give me the watch. Give me the watch. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Righto. Okay. You're going to have 60, cents, six, 60 right? seconds even to answer this many questions. And Can I time. start, Molly? Yeah. Okay. Start the clock. Now. 
<laughs> He's not going to get any right. <laughs> What's the first question? <laughs> oh, you're pushy, mate. You want get on this? You come on this show and you push us around. We're kind of kidding. Good. Yeah, yeah, go right. Hey, all right sense of humor. If you watch his own, have to right. have a sense of humor. Okay, okay. okay. Question one. Oh, Start hold on, on. Three, Time starts. Two, go. Name the final boss in the game, Aladdin. Jaffa. Jafar. So he's smart. Okay, what is the name of the host in EA's long-running series of American football games? I'm all. John Madden. That's right. The Hudson adapter for the SNES can play up to how many people at once? Trick question? Five. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, in the game Robocop versus Terminator, which character do you play as? Oh, mate, he's, he's, he's... Robocop. Exactly. Name the gun used on the SNES. Scope. Well, Nintendo scope, fair enough. Name five characters from the game Mario Kart. Come on, come on, come Mario, on. Mario, Luigi. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. You must pay the penalty yep. too slow. Ah. Okay, name one release that the Nintendo scope is used with. Uh, metal Combat. Beautiful, beautiful. How many weapons are there in the game Doom, not including your fists? Simple one. Six. Seven, mate, seven. What about the chainsaw? This is a punch, this is a fist. And this is a chainsaw. No, no, we don't have time. 60 seconds, all right. Um, 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 Sam and Max, who are the wacky detectives? Uh, no, forget that question, I messed it up. OK, next Three, question. Two, you can play as American one. President Bill Clinton in what game? Uh, 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 NBA uh, 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 Jam. Oh, we'll give it to him! We'll give it to him! Oh, what did he get? did you get generous? What are we going to give to him? Oh, because, man, I messed up a question and... Uh, Anyway, watch as who right. needs them, So, eh? anyway, you got from me one, two, three, four, five. Two, two from me. Five. And as five we all know, five and seven. two is eight. Uh, seven, mate. Of course. That's why we get into work that. on the show. He's good. All right. All right, next week we'll see another, another else finalist. Who's but bound to get eight, mate, so don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. All right. Right now, we're going to get back to the zone. The zone, zone, zone. EA just keep on bringing out the hottest in sporting games. Here's the latest. It's called NBA Live. The clock winds down. There's three seconds to go. He's got the ball. He scores. The crowd goes wild. Yeah! Get a grip. Uh, sorry, but, like, this is what I call a real basketball sim. The traditional game of five-on-five, whole-court, NBA-style basketball. It's got all the NBA teams in its lineup, as well as the current NBA players. As you can see, you view the game from a sort of commentary box position, which is kind of weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's unnoticeable. But one of the best things I found about this game was the controls. Once again, they take a bit of time to get used to, but once mastered, you can pull off plays like alley-oops, lob dunks, 360 dunks, pick and rolls, give and goes, over and unders, up and chunders, mother and fathers, corn beef sandwiches. The graphics are great, with each player made very distinguishable, not only in looks, but also with t-shirt numbers. The animation is smooth, with no confusion with who's got the ball or which player you are. The gameplay is awesome, so I give it a 93. Cranking the clack, smashing the boards, jamming the hoop. Oh, 90. So, 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 so. See, this is... So, so. Well, it's been a long time coming. In fact, we, we went and had breakfast. We were waiting so long, but finally, we get to show you this a time zone. It's called Desert Tank, and it's from our very good friends, Sega. Okay, now the vibe is this. You've got a certain amount of time to get through each phase, sort of like your average car game, right? He clicks down there, and you've got a certain amount of people to kill and a certain distance to cover in your tank. You've got all your different virtual views, which are famous in Sega games. Now, the thing is, if you don't blow up everybody, they hang behind you and they can nail you. The controls are pretty simple, a lot like the old Star Wars arcade game. The old one, not the new one, that is. You've got up, down, you're aiming like this, OK? Now, on your outside view, you can't actually see where you're hitting. So you come down here, and you've got your little cursor. Or inside the tank, even better, OK? You've got your machine gun on, the, on, your, on your trigger fingers, which runs out very quickly. If you'll see, if I hold it down, it heats up real easy. You can accelerate it just like a car, and you can move it forward and reverse. If you want to go now, somebody behind that you missed, like all these dudes, you're in reverse. Quite simple. So what I think of this? Well, basically, I'm offended that I have to turn around and take time off from playing this game to tell you that I love it, because I do. And I just want to turn right back around now. You can go to Zoneland. I'm going to continue this, because I've got about six credits left. Lucky Abstract. Right! Welcome back to the White Zone! Formerly used for Mortal Kombat 2, the special moves. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I mean, Mortal Kombat 2, I've been doing it so long, I'm just getting bored of it, you know? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. See, Doom 2 has just been released. Oh, Everybody's yeah. into it, man. Oh, it's huge. But it's pretty hard, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, very, very hard. So, um, I thought we'd give these guys, you know, a bit of a hand, help them out, get them through. Uh -huh. 
Cool. So anyway, we're going to show you a little trick here. Now, normally, if you're playing Doom 2, because it's so difficult, after about 15 seconds, this would happen. Now, Muttley, kill them. Oh, okay. You are a hell knight. I'm going to be a cyber demon. Yeah, right, cyber demon. No, Either way, kill Bev. Kill him! Mm. Kill him! Yes! Mm. Kill him! Just, mm. I'll help you kill him! Just, mm. Oh, yes. Now, normally in a game of Doom 2, uh. that's what would happen. A few seconds, you're running around and shooting a couple of things, you're dead! It's all over. But... Bev? Oh. Come back. Bev, get up! We're only playing, mate. All right. Now, normally in a game of Doom, you die. But in this mode, you put in IDDQD, not on a nightmare level. Nightmare level, death happens, okay? But on any other level, put in IDDQD. This is what happens. Okay, Cyber uh, Demon Motley, no. kill Beth! Kill him! Uh, kill him! Put that in! Uh, Smash him in the face! Uh, Smash him! Break his nose! Break... Uh, Mate, you're not doing it hard enough. Harder! Uh, Get... uh, See what I mean? It's not going to happen. Because he's now... Invincible. Man of steel. <gasps> well, come on. <laughs> Not even a super... Uh, super. That garlic I had last oh, night, man. man. Unreal. That cooking stuff. <laughs> wonder if the clean is coming. Well, that's it for our first show in our brand new time slot. Hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we continue our Christmas countdown with International Rugby, Rise of the Robots, Shark Fu, and Nigel Mantle's IndyCar 2. Remember, 8am from now on, guys. We look forward to seeing you then. Bye now.